Hey, what's going on? Thank you guys for tuning in to Rules for Rebels. Uh, and today we're going to be talking about Amazon FBA, selling on Amazon FBA, Amazon FBA gurus. Uh, I happen to see a really interesting article on Reddit earlier, and this article comes from The Atlantic, and it's titled How to Lose Tens of Thousands of Dollars on Amazon. Now, uh, we're going to kind of read through this article. Uh, the article is mainly about, uh, you know, all these people who hope to find financial freedom and leave their jobs and only have to work two hours a day all through, you know, selling on Amazon FBA. And it, it also heavily focuses on the Amazon FBA gurus. You know, there's plenty of them out there. Um, it's really nothing new. Uh, you know, a couple months ago, I, I did the uh, the story about the amazing seller uh, getting shut down by the FTC for fraud. Um, and, you know, there are some good coaches out there. There are some good gurus out there. There are some good courses out there. Uh, but there's probably a lot more bullshit scam artists out there. Um, and, you know, one thing I hear from a lot of people who take courses and things like that is like, look, I, I paid fifteen hundred dollars for a course and I get the fucking thing. And it's literally just a bunch of links to YouTube videos. Um, and if this is the pro like a lot of the biggest course sellers out there are doing this, you know, that's why I've always been hesitant to put out any course. because It's like if I charge you one hundred dollars, I want you to be able to turn around and make a thousand dollars off of it. Um, you know, I want to provide a ton of value. I, I take it very seriously. Um, the, the idea of, of not only taking people's money, but people putting their confidence and investing time um, in, in kind of what you're telling them to do. I, I take that very seriously, which is why I don't really put out courses. But I hear from a lot of people who buy courses like, yeah, I paid fifteen hundred dollars and I literally just got a bunch of links to Amazon videos or, or I'm sorry, a bunch of links to YouTube videos. Um, and it's like, you know, yeah, I guess maybe you kind of cataloged all these YouTube videos for me, but like shit, people are out there watching this stuff for free or uh, I hear a lot of people who sign up for things uh, with the promise of like a course and coaching and the coaching turns out to be like maybe like a once a month, like large group webinar type thing or you're promised a bunch of hold hand, hand holding and you're not really getting that. Um, and it's kind of all about what this article was about. A uh, couple things about selling on Amazon. I, I've stopped making a lot of videos about selling on Amazon. I just don't really have that much of an interest in, in Amazon anymore. Um, something I talk about a lot, but the idea that you can make money on Amazon is kind of silly. The idea that you can build a business on Amazon is kind of silly. Um, if you want to start a business and you want to make Amazon a sales channel or a component of your business, awesome but i think way too many people are, are are going into a business and the business consists of nothing more than selling on amazon i mean that's literally the business and that's the game plan is selling amazon um and, and that's just silly um also you know the, the like i talk about this a lot too but the days of picking random bullshit off off aliexpress or alibaba and it having it sell on amazon it just doesn't work anymore when i made my first video I think first video ever, the how I do $250,000 in sales per month selling AliExpress and Alibaba, Alibaba products on eBay and Amazon. That was probably back in like 2014 or something like that. And back then you could literally anything you ordered off uh, Alibaba or AliExpress, you could turn a profit. Some products were going to be better than others, but like literally every single product, no matter what you picked, uh, you would at the very least sell out and, and either break even or, or make a decent profit. Some products did better than others. Um, but those days ha have come to an end. You know, I've run full fledged businesses on Amazon and I've also just kind of tinkered with little kind of bullshit like inverted ni nipple correctors and gay lesbian bracelets and, you know, all types of other little like knickknacks and things like that. And, uh, when, when Nintendo came out with, uh, the NES classic version, I was selling cord extenders. You know, I I've done full scale businesses on Amazon and I've also done kind of the random just random products on Amazon. And I noticed probably around 2016 is when just ordering random shit kind of stopped working. And over time, it's gotten worse and worse. Um, I also see a lot of people just kind of like, they're so anxious to get on Amazon that they just pick anything. And it's almost like I'm terrible with analogies. I shouldn't even try to make an analogy, but it's almost like like a surfer. You know, you're so anxious to surf, you just go out and you don't check the the wind report or the wave report or whatever surfers check, right? And you know, you may go out there for two weeks and there's there's just nothing. There's no waves. There's there's nothing to surf. Um, you kind of have to have to wait for a good day and then go out when there's actually waves. And same thing with Amazon. You know, um, I don't know if that analogy made any sense whatsoever. Uh, but with Amazon, I see a lot of people like picking a product just so that they can have a product to sell on Amazon, as opposed to you know passing up maybe a couple hundred products, waiting for that one product that doesn't have too much competition, that has good sales volume, that can be sold on Amazon and on other sales channels. Um, and you, and one of the, a couple other things I just wanted to mention, I, I see Amazon kind of reaching a fever pitch, um, you know, towards the end of 2017 with cryptocurrency, 
we saw this madness for crypto. And, you know, as they say with anything, when, when something reaches that fever pitch, when, you know, your shoe shine boy or that your, you know, your average housewife is talking about it, it's time to get out. You know, there, there's that famous story about the, uh, the guy who pulled his money out of the stock market before the crash because his shoe shine, shoe shine boy was talking about buying stocks. You know, crypto was the same thing. I, I, I got greedy. I, I should have wised up at the end of 2018 and said, you know, or 2017 and said, this thing has reached a fever pitch. It's time to get out. And I see Amazon at the same point. Amazon is a fever pitch. You have, you know, everyday Joes like hearing about all these Amazon stories or reading some article in Forbes about the 19 year old kid who quit his accounting job and made $150,000 doing retail arbitrage on Amazon. Um, I'm not trying to be doom and gloom about Amazon. I'm not trying to tell you not to sell on Amazon. Um, but at a point when everybody's talking about this Amazon gold mine, um, I think it's it's smart to realize that like nothing's easy. Uh, a couple people in this article are quoted as the saying things like, I thought I was only gonna have to work like an hour a day. Like this is actually gonna require a lot of work. Like no shit, Sherlock, anything, you know? If, if it was easy to do, everybody would do it. Um, if it was easy to do, nobody would have jobs. Um, why would I go waste eight hours a day at a job if for one hour a day I could make money on Amazon? Is it possible? Yeah, it's possible, but it's gonna take a lot of work and there, there's gonna be some trial and error and there's gonna be some failures. Um, so that's kind of all I'm kind of trying to highlight with these stories. I personally, to me, part of the reason I've taken a step back from Amazon is like until I have my next full scale business that I'm really going to go hard with and I'm willing to really invest a lot of advertising dollars in and I'm willing to kind of play the long term game with it. It's just not worth kind of nickel and diming on Amazon or chipping away at little products. It's just too hard. Um, the wins you have aren't going to be big and, you know, you're going to lose. The one other thing that kind of struck me as, as weird about this article is um, all these people in this article, like, yeah, I lost 40 grand buying wine aerators. I lost 40 grand buying potato peelers. I lost, you know, why people feel the need to go into it with a ton of money, especially when all these people are like, the articles make all these people seem like they're super poor and, and really struggling, but yet they have like $40,000 that they can just like throw away on a whim. Um, really strikes me as odd, but I mean, I, I'm a huge fan of start, start fast, start small, fail fast. If you fail, you can move on to something else. When you find something that you have a little bit of success with, start scaling up, but your losses aren't going to be too catastrophic. And like everybody in the story is losing like 40 grand with the exception of one guy that lost like four grand, but I've been rambling long enough. Let's get into the article. I know some people hate these like reading articles, but you know, I, I kind of like that. There's a lot of times where I probably wouldn't read an article, but maybe if I'm sitting on the pooper, or if I'm sitting in traffic, I would listen to somebody read an article. Um, and somebody recently told me they were unsubscribing because they don't like when people read articles and don't put the links to the article in the description. So you can find a link to this article on The Atlantic in the description. Again, this article comes from The Atlantic. It's titled How to Lose Tens of Thousands of Dollars on Amazon. A growing number of self-proclaimed experts promise they can teach anyone how to make passive income selling cheap Chinese goods and the internet's largest store. Not everyone's getting rich quick. It was only after they'd sunk $40,000 and nine months of precious nights and weekends that Jordan McDowell and William Bork realized how hard it is to make a passive income selling things on Amazon. The couple had hoped to strike it rich or at least quit their jobs, buying goods from China and reselling them on the e-commerce site. Instead, they lost their savings. For that, they blame Matt Baju and Mike Gazzola. In late 2016, McDowell and Bjork stumbled across a podcast hosted by Ben Joe and Gazzola, normal guys who claimed they were making thousands of dollars working less than two hours a day on Amazon. The pair promised that anyone could do the same. All they needed to, to do was pay $3,999 for three months of coaching, and they would teach them everything they needed to know about the business. Uh, just one other kind of quick commentary. I notice a lot of people almost feel like the money they pay to a coach or guru is kind of the gateway to success. Like, oh, well, I'm not going to need to do work because I paid you $3,900. That's like my golden ticket to making money, right? Like, well, no, fuckhead, you, you're still going to have to put in work. You know, paying somebody can shorten the learning process, but simply giving some money to somebody does not guarantee success. And that's an attitude I see about courses and gurus way too often. Um, let's see. They learn how to source and ship a product from China, how to list it for an attractive markup on Amazon's third-party marketplace, how to advertise it to consumers, and how to get them to leave good reviews. Amazon would take care of the logistics of storing and shipping for a fee through its Fulfillment by Amazon program. Bajou and Gazzola even provided class participants with manufacturing contacts in China and organized paid tours of Chinese merchandise markets. At the time, the couple was living in a tiny New York apartment struggling to make rent. McDowell was working a job she hated. 
Bundu and Gazzola were offering a way out, and they seemed credible. They even posted screenshots showing the money they made from selling supplements on Amazon. Bjork emailed a few people who had taken the class, all of whom said they were happy with their experience. So the couple put the class fee on their credit card and started attending Monday night webinars and picked their first two products, a glass wine decanter and a plastic wine aerator, both sourced from China. I I could tell you right off the bat without even doing analytics on these that they're terrible products to sell, but uh, let's continue on. Following Baju and Gazzola's advice to purchase the minimum mass order possible, they ordered 3,000 decanters and 1,500 aerators. They must not have shopped around very much either if that's the lowest MOQ that they could find. Um, And had them shipped directly to Amazon's warehouses across the country from which the company would send them directly to consumers. Six months later, they had sold only about 100 decanters and a few hundred aerators. Customs taxes, shipping costs were starting to add up. The aerators kept breaking, and so Bjork and McDowell had to pay for returns. Amazon charged change. I think they meant charge. Amazon charged a seller fee of $39.99 a month, a per fulfillment cost of a few dollars a unit, and a storage fee of 70 cents per cubic foot that increased during the holiday season. Then there was the cost of advertising, which they needed to actually get their product noticed amid the thicket of other people also selling wine accessories, also bought cheap from China, also on Amazon. Here's another thing that I talk about a lot as well. So here's a problem with like buying stuff for, from Alibaba, right? The, we did a search on Alibaba for coffee grinders. Now, um, if we go up to the top of this page, okay, there's a coffee grinder, somewhat similar to that, but these are two different models, right? This one actually catches and stores your coffee. Here's kind of a different take on that one. Here we have an electric one, coffee grinder, coffee grinder, same exact coffee grinder, same exact coffee grinder, same exact coffee grinder, different one, same exact coffee grinder, different one, different one, same coffee grinder, same coffee grinder, same coffee grinder, same coffee grinder, same coffee grinder. So essentially, I mean, you guys know this, I don't need to to explain this to you, but uh, if if you're sourcing shit from Alibaba, unless you're the first on a trend or unless you get the supplier to tweak that product for you, like literally it's it's 300 of the same fucking coffee grinders being sold with, you know, I'm going to call mine the grind machine and you're going to call yours uh, the coffee bean and I'm going to call mine Tim's coffee grind, you know, and it's just you have the same thing all over Amazon. So uh, the fact that everybody goes into Amazon like thinking that it's going to be super easy or thinking that they're going to be the one person that's going to be successful um, you know, if there's a hundred people all selling this coffee grinder, the person who's going to rise to the top is either the person who is the best marketing whiz or the person who's willing to spend the most money on Amazon PPC ads. So unless you are the smartest marketer out there, um, or the one who's got the deepest pockets to pay for ads, um, you know, you're probably not going to succeed selling a random product off Alibaba in this day and age, um, unless you really build a brand or really build a business. Um, let's see. So we talked about, uh, then there was the advertising costs, which I knew, okay. Uh, maybe worst of all, the couple told me that they were left alone to deal with all these headaches. Though their payment guaranteed them three months of coaching, they couldn't reach Baloo after the first few days. And this is a common experience of people who hire uh, you know, Amazon experts. Uh, Bijou disputes this and said he and Gazzola appeared writing in an email that all students get a response within 24 hours, Monday through Friday. Within six months, McDowell and Bjork had spent nearly $40,000 with almost nothing to show for it. So they auctioned off what inventory they could, paid Amazon to destroy the rest, and got out of the business. It's not passive income. It's a ton of work, McDowell told me. We lost all our savings. Like, you, you really thought that, that, you know, I mean, here's a perfect example of somebody who thought, I paid this guy $3,900. Now the magic's supposed to happen where I work an hour a day and, and quit my job. Like, no, of course it's going to be work. Um, let's see. Let's see what this is. View a visual story of the Amazon Gold Rush. Uh, reload. Let's see what this is all about here. The Amazon Gold Rush. Struggling to pay rent. Okay, that's just a recap of this. Um, they're frustrated with Amazon, which they say is making money off the failures of people like them. Well, it's, it's not Amazon's fault that you shelled out $40,000 for coffee grinders, hired a shitty expert, thought that you could work only one hour a day and failed. That is completely your fault. Uh, but they're even angrier with Bijou and Gazzola and their company, which was at the time called Amazon Secrets. It's a scam, McDowell said. They take your money and they don't deliver. I think this is a bigger issue these guys. 
Uh, Bajot and Gazzola deny the allegations. They say that one of the first things they teach students is to make sure the product will be profitable and that anyone who loses money simply isn't following their advice. Losing $40,000, Gazzola told me, would be very difficult following their methods. In an email, Bajou told me that nearly 1,000 students have paid to receive training from them with only a small handful of complaints. People are, are quick to complain when they aren't making money, yet less forthcoming when they succeed, he said. Uh, some, he said, generate more than $200,000 a month in revenue. Let's see, what does this say? You want to ensure that your product photography is top notch, you have plenty of customers, okay. Uh, Bajou and Gazzola decided to decline to put me in touch with any of their clients, even happy ones. Uh, but I spoke with 34 year old Travis Tolman, who sells a travel product. He didn't want me to say specifically in case competitors try to copy him. He makes roughly $4,000 a month, he said, enough to allow him, his wife, and four children to leave Houston after Hurricane Harvey and travel throughout Southeast Asia for four months, working just an hour or two a day. Uh, but Bajou and Gazzola have a growing list of unhappy clients. One Molly Cox lost around $40,000 selling meal prep containers uh, on Bajou and Gazzola's advice. Others told me they're out 4,000, 4,600, 9,000. In a secret Facebook group, dozens of them have de gathered to discuss attempts to get their money back and seek advice on how to unload hundreds of unsold jar openers, locking carabiners, and lemon squeezers. They all thought they'd bet on the right horse. Amazon captures nearly half of all online retail spending in the United States, and more than half of its sales come from third-party sellers. Uh, it's where America shops online. And here's kind of another false, I don't want to say false narrative, but another thing that I see, a lot of these gurus, a lot of the people pitching courses, even more so than selling themselves, they sell Amazon, right? Amazon does over $1 trillion worth of business a day. I, I saw, Sam, was that guy, Sam Sam Cook or whoever the guy with consulting.com is. Jeff Bezos makes $1 million every hour. Imagine if you could get only a, a, a shred of that. People think like Amazon is so big. Amazon sells so much stuff that any numbnuts can throw stuff on there and make money. And that, that's not the case. Um, let's see. But if selling things on Amazon is a new internet gold rush, the web abounds with people pledging to help followers find the treasure for a hefty fee. They have names like Amazing Wealth System and Seller's Playbook. And their pitch is, is not dissimilar from the various iterations of the make millions working from home schemes that have cluttered chum boxes since the dawn of the internet. Uh, yet instead of touting shadowy multi-level marketing schemes or obvious scams, they're pitching something we can all understand, Amazon. Opaque as its lucrative and the bottomless appetite of the American consumer who can't seem to stop buying wine aerators and meal prep containers and insulated water bottles. It's irresistible to sell to a nation that loves the side hustle. Um, the nation doesn't love the side hustle. The nation loves spending money on bullshit frivolously. Um, in the first nine months of 2018, 48 consumers filed complaints with the Federal Trade Commission about business opportunity schemes regarding Amazon. According to data obtained from a Freedom of Information Act request by The Atlantic, that's up nearly 18 in 2017 and 14 the year before that. Nearly half of those complaints say they lost more than $35,000. One of them who described himself as a disabled veteran lost 45,000 trying to work, trying to sell a workout kit on Amazon. Uh, another said he had just lost his job and used his retirement savings to pay for coaching. In March, the FTC sued three men behind the amazing wealth system. I did a video on that. Um, if I can find that, let's see, we're at the 1818 mark. Uh, if I can find it, I'll drop it in an end card above. Uh, alleging that it made unsubstantiated earnings claims. Vulnerable people, including retirees, students, and non-native English speakers were lured in through free Amazon workshops where they'd be pitched on a three-day uh, $1995 seminar, according to a complaint filed by the Washington State's attorney. Uh, after the proprietors would offer more education packages that cost anywhere from $4,000 to $35,000, and would encourage people to apply for multiple credit cards or obtain third-party financing to pay for the workshops, according to a complaint. A settlement in June required the defendants to pay $10.8 million to the FTC. In the settlement, the defendants neither admitted nor denied the underlying factual allegations. Um, and in July, the agency charged sellers playbook run by the former apprentice contestant Jesse Condors Tieva and her husband Matthew Tieva with making false claims. According to the complaint, the Tievas charged customers up to thirty-two thousand nine ninety-seven for the amazing coaching sessions, ranking in more than breaking in more than fifteen million 
uh, through credit card payments from April 2017 to May 2018. In no November, the Minnesota District Court required the defendants to surrender any assets related to the company, requesting $20.8 million in a judgment. In the settlement, the defendants neither admitted nor de denied the underlying factual allegations. Uh, neither Matt Baju or Nick Gazzola, or, I'm sorry, Mike Gazzola have been accused of any wrongdoing by the FTC. The agency prohibits deceiving customers about money-making potential and requires that any earnings claims be supported by proof, but it leaves a crucial bit of wiggle room. If sellers say somewhere in tiny print that their method doesn't work for everyone, they can still promote the stories of the su successful clients without mentioning that hundreds of people have lost money. Bajou and Gazzola both make those disclaimers in their promotional materials. Uh, Amazon declined to provide comment about Bajou and Gazzola. A spokesman told me the company worked closely with the FTC to bring both of last year's cases. Entrepreneurs and small businesses are important to Amazon, according to a spokesman, and we aggressively pursue those that attempt to harm their selling experience. Uh, in 2016 and 2017, Bajou and Gazzola were a coaching powerhouse. In the summer of 2017, their podcast about earning a passive income on Amazon reached number three on Apple's charts. But in February, they parted ways and now offer competing coaching services, uh, AM Secrets and AMSecrets.net. <laughs> One of them is AMSecrets.com, the other one's AMSecrets.net, respectively. Uh, they both say they're doing well on their own. Gazzola told me his videos have been downloaded millions of times and that he's helped thousands of people. Uh, Bijou, meanwhile, told me that he has trained thousands upon thousands with his free and paid classes. Uh, because Bijou and Gazzola no longer work together, I spoke with them individually. Gazzola told me that in the beginning, the two just wanted to share the mistake they had made selling on Amazon so that other people didn't make the same ones. People need coaches, he said, because Amazon changes its rules so often and it can be difficult for an individual to keep up. But he still maintained that students could make a lot of money following his advice. When people don't succeed, it's usually because they quit too early. There's no such thing as get rich quick, he told me, but it would be hard for you to fail if you literally worked your butt off. Uh, Bajou told me largely the same thing, that many of his clients have actually made a lot of money selling on Amazon. He recently put out a series of video case studies with happy students, some of whom say they're making thousands of dollars. You can't deny video proof, he said. Well, if you're paying those people from Fiverr to make the videos, you can't deny it. I don't know that he's doing that, but I'm just saying. Uh, those who have failed selling on Amazon, he maintains, usually haven't followed the steps outlined. Um, and here's what's so silly that, you know, it's not easy to roll out a winning product, right? I have a lot of experience in e-commerce, a lot of experience on eBay, a lot of experience on Amazon, and I have more failures than I do have successes. Um, so for him to say that, like, I, I can tell somebody who's never done this before a couple things, and I guarantee they're going to have success, um, is it, just silly. Uh, besides, people who fail aren't bitter, he said. They understand that selling on Amazon is a financial risk, and it's a risk they're willing to take. What's more, it's a risk they can afford. Looking at people in the red, it's not like they're losing their shirts, he told me. It's a loss anyone can take. It's not like they're losing their home because of this. Uh, indeed, none of Bijou and Gazzola's former clients, those who paid thousands to join what the pair called their inner circle, told me that they lost their home. But several lost their, lost their savings or went deep into credit card debt uh, or took time off from a high-paying jobs to pursue what they thought was a can't-miss opportunity. Um, it may seem surprising that so many people many with uh, stable finances and professional careers, gave money to two strangers they met on the internet, but Bajou and Gazzola's disappointed former clients told me it took them a while to discover the many obstacles to making a passive income on Amazon. One of them is Jeffrey Sanders, 61-year-old white collar aerospace industry worker who lives in Seattle. He told me he believed that Bajou and Gazzola's pitch is deceptive by design. Customers pay for three months of webinars and coaching, he told me. It takes much longer for a product to actually arrive in Amazon's warehouses from China and start selling. Uh, and that's a good point. You know, if I were to hire those guys tomorrow, um, which would be, you know, we'll say uh, uh, January 7th, um, it's probably going to take me a, a, at least a week or a couple weeks to go through their course. Once I go through their course, I'm, I'm guessing it's maybe a couple more weeks to, to do product research and get comfortable and pick a product. Um, at that point, I order the product, maybe a couple weeks of production, uh, 30 day shipping time from China. Like your, your coaching with them is going to expire probably before your product even get hits the Amazon's warehouses or shortly after. So like you're not really getting, uh, handholding through the actual experience of like creating your listing and everything else. Um, but I, I digress. Um, let's see the, the fees from Amazon don't actually start accumulating until either Gazola Disputes is saying many people could actually start selling on Amazon in two to three weeks. Um, yeah, I mean, if you found a product instantly and had it shipped by air instead of by sea, just not always feasible depending on what product you're selling. Uh, by the time people realize that selling on Amazon is harder than it looks, he said, the three months have passed. 
Credit card companies won't refund the money, and Bajou and Gazola tell clients they need to pay for more advice. They advertise all this money you'll be making, but by the time the bottom drops out, they say, too bad. It's been more than three months, he said. It's really the perfect scam. Uh, eight former clients told me that Bijou and Gazola failed to deliver on even their promise of basic coaching. When the clients asked for help, they'd either be told that their coaching had expired or given an answer that didn't help at all. They can help you with rudimentary problems, Sanders said, who lost 4000 trying to sell wine bottle openers. you noticing a trend that everybody's going into selling the same stuff. Uh, but as soon as it gets below the surface depth, they have no answers. He founded the secret Facebook group to share tips about solving problems Bijou and Gazola uh, wouldn't address, he said. Uh, Brian Ash, who signed up for Amazon Secrets in October 2016 and tried to sell miniature camping tarps. He told me that when he mentioned in a webinar that he was having trouble signing up on Amazon, uh, Bijou's solution was for him to email Jeff Bezos, the company's CEO. He also told me that Bijou and Gazola promised him one-on-one -on -one coaching in small group sizes. They often took weeks to respond to questions. He and others were asked to write positive reviews of their coaching experience in exchange for a chance to win a financial prize that never materialized, he said. Uh, Ash said it seemed like while well, the pair were, were good at marketing, they actually knew little about how Amazon worked. I don't want to sound like a sore loser, but it's definitely deceptive, he told me. Uh, they hyped how easy it was and disguised the risk. And I mean, that, that's true of anything where you're going to pay somebody for. You know, it's why all these, you know, 16 year old millionaires and everybody trying to sell stuff online tries to sell you the easy dream. If you tell people it's going to require work, you're probably going to fail a few times before you succeed. It's going to require a lot of work. It's going to take a while. It's not as easy to get people in a door as telling people it's going to be easy as shit. You're going to work an hour a day and you're going to make a shitload of money. Uh, some of the advice Bajou and Gazola gave the group violated Amazon's terms of service, Ash said. According to six former clients, Bajou and Gazola told them to use their Inner Circle Facebook page to encourage other members to buy their products and write five-star reviews, after which the sellers would compensate the buyer for the cost of the product through PayPal. Amazon banned the practice of giving away free products in exchange for reviews in 2016. Uh, but according to the former students, Bijou continued to tell them to use the method to boost reviews. One former client sent me a dozen screenshots from Inner Circle members who had bought his product and asked to be compensated via Facebook in 2017, after, long after Amazon had changed its policies. Gazola told me that Bijou handled the Facebook group, but Bijou said that they were both in charge of it. Bijou said that it was never advised students to compensate one another for products or to solicit five-star reviews. When Amazon figured out what the Inner Circle members were doing, it wiped the reviews from the site. Uh, products without reviews rank lower in search results, so many clients saw a precipitous drop-off in sales as a result. Uh, Molly Cox and her husband flew from Texas to China on a trip organized by Bijou and Gazola only to find that the prices quoted by Bijou and Gazola's Chinese suppliers were higher than the ones they could find online, she said. Bijou and Gazola were often unavailable for questions. When they were reachable, they gave bad advice, Cox told me. Uh, they are selling free information, all of which you can find yourself online very easily, she said. But they package it up and market, as, market it as if it's some secret that only they can tell you, which is very misleading. Uh, Bijou told me in an email that he and Gazola merely introduced clients to a sourcing agent and that some students do find better pricing on their own. He again denied that he was unavailable for questions and said that he never encouraged students to give away products for free in exchange for compensation. Uh, as for violating Amazon's terms of service, he said the rules change all the time and he encourages students to understand them and keep up to date on the changes. Uh, Sanders said that Bijou and Gazola give students too little information about the challenges of selling on Amazon. No, they brag about how much money they've made, yet they seem unable to help most students follow a similar path, disappearing when complicated problems arise. Indeed, he said they make struggling students feel like failure is their own fault, a way to mask their lack of knowledge and the intricacies of selling on Amazon. They say nobody else is having problems, he said. It must be you. Uh, in late July, Bijou invited me to attend his e-commerce mentors live mastermind seminar held over two days at a Marriott in Woodland Hills, California. Amid the sunny sprawl of the San Fernando Valley, it was free to Inner Circle members, though attendees still had to pay their own airfare and lodging. About 50 of them had, coming from places as far as New York, one couple had driven all night from Arizona. They included an ER doctor who wanted passive income so she could get a vacation home in Cancun, and a young couple celebrating their wedding anniversary, and a man who owned a brick-and-mortar medical supply store trying to migrate his sales online. Bijou, who is 31, opened the seminar by repeatedly phrasing his successful stories. He pointed to two young men in the back of the room who he said were making $100,000 a month selling sunglasses on Amazon and encouraged people to seek advice from those in the room who were killing it in their business. Another man who said he'd made $30,000 from selling a wrist exerciser on Amazon implored his fellow guests to trust the process. It's amazing. 
but most of the attendees were not so effusive. When Bijou asked everyone in the room to introduce themselves, many said they were struggling. I have yet to launch, but I really need to crank up sales, said Alicia Nagger, 52. Uh, a 52-year-old from New Jersey, she launched, launched a knife sharpener business in October 2017 after deciding to stay home with her son, who has juvenile Huntington's disease. Another man noted that he'd made money in Bitcoin, but still hadn't been able to crack Amazon yet. Um, what, what the hell is this Bitcoin, right? You bought Bitcoin, you lucked out that it went up. That really had nothing to do with your skill sets. I'm not sure how that really relates to Amazon. But uh, despite trying to sell vitamins for eight months, a Maryland woman, Allison Pippin, who sells slime, said she was about ready to scrap her product and start over. Uh, Henry Serrano, the man with the brick and mortar store, had spent $4,600 on wholesale medical, medical kits and hadn't made any money back at all. Uh, the first day of the seminar was broken up into lectures by Bijou and other experts. Much of the content was focused on how sellers could get into what, how sellers could get onto what those in the Amazon business reverently call page one. The first page of search results. A uh, placement on which is widely considered to be crucial to moving products. Their names included finding the hottest products that you can run on page one in 10 days or less and keyword research and optimization for page one ranking. Uh, Bijou's spiel was similar to the one he gives online. If you just stick with it, you will get amazing results, he said. It's not going to guarantee that you make money, but it's going to be very difficult to lose money. He reminded attendees to pay for a subscription site called Jungle Scout, which monitors which Amazon stores have good sales so that they could then pick pick a product on one of those stores that can be retailed for five to 10 times what it costs to produce in China. He advised clients to find keywords that will rank their products in, in search results and offer discounts and giveaways that generate a lot of web traffic. Uh, Bijou is no stranger to the coaching business. In October 2015, he paid $25,000 to, to attend a seminar put on by Russell Brunson, an author, an entrepreneur, and a self-described marketing expert. There, he met a few people who were making thousands of dollars selling stuff on Amazon, so he decided to try it out. He and Gazzola, who previously coached people on how to make money investing in real estate, started selling supplements on Amazon. Are we starting to see a trend here? These guys are not making their money on Amazon. They're making their money by putting on courses. Um, in their first 90 days, they had 60,000 in sales, Bijou told me. They launched their coaching program in 2016. Yet Bijou himself isn't particularly isn't a particularly convincing authority. He loses his train of thought easily. His lectures are punctuated by phrases like, I forgot how I got sidetracked. And where was I? Was my What was my damn point? He spent much of one session teaching attendees how to pick the right keywords to sell a baby carrier because anything having to do with babies is pretty much going to sell well. Uh, but then seemed to know little about why people would buy baby carriers. <laughs> oh my gosh. Or what search terms they'd use. When attendees asked sim simple questions like how many words could, could they have in their product description, he didn't know. Um, and then there are everyday issues that come up with shipping and selling internationally. Uh, people at the seminar told me that the products they'd ordered from China were defective and customers started leaving bad reviews, or they got hit with copyright infringement lawsuit and Amazon took their listings down, even if they diligently searched their product to make sure it did not violate any copyrights. Advertising on Amazon is a necessary and expensive uh, storage fees are unavoidable and new competitors pop up every day undercutting prices. It's not as easy as it looks, said Nagar. Uh, though Bijou said the seminar said at the seminar that people who followed his methods will always get to page one of search results. Nagar said she never made it anywhere close. All, altogether, she'd spent around $4,000 on her product shipping and storage and $5,000 on the class. She doesn't blame Bijou completely. Amazon's algorithm changes all the time. The page one system is nebulous. And what it takes to sell products is changing as more sellers go online. But she told me there is a little bit, bit of deceit to it. They're making it out to be a lot easier than it is. I don't even know if they really know what they're doing. <laughs> After attending the seminar in Woodland Hills, Nagar decided to give up on selling on Amazon. Her disabled son is requiring more and more care. She said it turns out that selling things on Amazon is actually closer to a full-time job. Bajou disputes all these accounts. He told me that Nagar must not have read his disclaimers that say that selling on Amazon is not a get-rich scheme. He said that all entrepreneurs is learning, growing, and never claim to know everything. And when I expressed doubt, that it is easy to make a passive income come on Amazon without working very hard. He wrote me to say this. That's funny. My new store is doing 100K per month on Amazon, and I work on it maybe three hours per week because I have a team who handles it for me. So I can easily prove that it is possible to make passive income with the Amazon. Uh, many of the seminar attendees I interviewed seemed determined to keep following Bajou's methods on Amazon, even if it cost them more money. When I asked Pippin why she thought her slime hadn't sold, 
even though she'd followed Bijou's advice, she blamed herself. She picked the wrong item, she said, and because she works a nine to five job as an IT consultant, she hasn't been able to put in the hours at night to work on her site. Like many of the clients I spoke with, she had come to the seminar because her products weren't selling and emerged from it more determined than ever to make her business work. Uh, the world is moving online, Pippin told me, and she doesn't want to miss out. Amazon is going to take over the world, she told me. Um, man, this is a long article. <laughs> I just paused it and scrolled. We've got a little ways to go. Uh, it may seem obvious to an outsider that most people aren't going to become rich by selling things on Amazon. Uh, but that's the thing about gold rushes. Some people do find gold, and it is sometimes hard to tell what distinguishes them from the people who don't. Travis Tolman, the travel product seller, is about to launch his second product on Amazon, and he thinks he'll be able to make about $8,000 a month. When I asked him why he succeeded while so many others at the seminar failed, he said that he wasn't quite sure. I think I just did a really good job of following directions, he told me. There's something uniquely American about believing that with a little bit of hard work, anybody can make money fast. In the 19th century, advertisements promised people exclusive selling rights to a certain product for free. They'd pay the money and then find out that the product didn't exist or that dozens of other people were selling it in the US. Uh, the depth of commitment to social mobility and uplift seems to give some degree of distinctiveness to how fraud operates, uh, said Edward Ballison, a professor at Duke University who has written a book on the history of fraud in America. The success of Amazon coaching market says something about the current state of the economy. As the American middle class disappears, many people feel as if they've lost their financial footing and are seeking an easy shortcut to get back to stability. The best indicator of whether someone will be amenable to be defrauded has to do with financial insecurity, David Vladek, a former director of the Federal Trade Commission's Bureau of Consumer Protection, who is now a professor at Georgetown, told me. Earning extra money is especially appealing to people who look around during economic booms, see all the people benefiting, and wonder how they can do it too. They hear the pitch, and they think that they are the one gold digger who's going to strike it rich. There is a really strong democratic ethos that suffices that marketing, anybody can do this, you just have to have the guts, Belliston said. It's not low-income people who fall victim to online fraud, Vladek said. They don't have the thousands of dollars needed to pay scammers in the first place. It's people who have a, a little bit of extra money and want to invest it to get more breathing room. When during the Great Recession, millions of families lost jobs or saw their income reduced, business opportunity scams proliferated, he said. Many of the people I talked to at the seminar said they just wanted a little bit more than they had. To build a bigger retirement fund, work less, buy a vacation home. Investigating potential fraud is hard. Regulators have to find the bad actors, get proof of the claims they made, subpoena their records, talk to credit card companies, see how many of their clients actually lost money, and engage in a thorny business of separating criminally fraud from merely naive. Uh, the Federal Trade Commission is stacked, staffed significantly low, below where it was in the 1980s, Vladek said, and it can be difficult for investigators to even learn about get-rich-quick schemes because so many people are embarrassed that they've been so gullible. Uh, one of the constant themes is the silent sucker, the person who was taken in but doesn't want anyone to know, Ballaston told me. Today's America is very pro-entrepreneur, anti-big government. Many Americans don't have sympathy for people who lose money to these kinds of schemes, he said. We celebrate the self-made man who starts a successful business from scratch, but mock the people who get duped by trying to do the same. Uh, no one wants to admit that they're the only one who can't make it work. The internet has made it easier for salesmen like Bajou and Gazola to find a potential audience, but it has also made it, made it easier for those who believe that they have been victimized to find one another. One DC woman who lost thousands trying to sell balance boards on Amazon with Bajou and Gazola, uh, Gazzola's help told me that she might still be trying to sell on Amazon had she not been invited to Jeffrey Sanders' secret Facebook group. In the original Inner Circle Facebook group, everybody was positive, she said. No one discussed, discussed the troubles they were going through. It wasn't until she signed on to Sanders' group that she realized lots of other people were losing money, she said. Bajou seems determined to quiet the malcontents, though people who paid to take the class were guaranteed lifetime membership in the Amazon Secrets Inner Circle Facebook group. He kicked out anyone who joined Sanders' Facebook group, who joined Sanders' private Facebook group. Uh, McDowell, Ash, and Sanders told me in emails to his original Facebook group, but you warned members that they were only allowed to post positive comments and that he had zero tol tolerance rule for negativity. He demanded that Sanders shut down his separate Facebook group, saying another client asked for a refund after seeing the group. Uh, we do not want any of our members in that group under any circumstances, he wrote to Sanders. Bajou told me in an email that the coaches were available to answer questions about setbacks, and he was trying to create a positive environment in the Facebook group. If anyone was removed, it was for good reason, he wrote. He acknowledged that he had told Sanders to shut down the secret Facebook group and said that it was in violation of the terms of the class. 
Uh, in August 2017, Nick Sanders, Jeffrey Sanders' youngest son, responded to a Quora thread asking if AmazonSecrets.net is a get-rich scheme. In it, Sanders alleged that Gazola and Bajou had breached contracts with customers, censored criticism, and faked podcast reviews, and that when he traveled with them on a trip to China, they wrote him a $2,000 check that bounced. They sued him for libel in a lawsuit filed in Los Angeles Superior Court in October. Bajou and Gazola alleged that Sanders' Quora post lost them $300,000 in revenue. Gazzola told me that Sanders is a disgruntled employee and said that his check bounced because Sanders had tried to cash uh, an American check in China. Uh, in a separate court filing, Sanders denied all of Bijou and Gazzola's allegations and requested that the court dismiss the libel lawsuit. The case has currently stayed pending Sanders' appeal of the trial court's rejection of his motion to dismiss. Uh, yet below Sanders' court post, there are other skeptics of Bijou and Gazzola, as well as many answers supportive to the pair. Uh, one supporter of Bajou and Gazzola, Huxley Finch, is accompanied by a photo that appears to be of a Yemeni boy who talks in a BBC video, video about cutting his leg to escape a burning building after a bomb. <laughs> and another nail brain uses a photo of a male, male model named uh, Heath Hutchins. Another Tomas Kulo is accompanied by a photo of Jeff Bezos. Uh, some of the other accounts that support Bajou and Gazzola are real. I corresponded uh, over email with an actor named Anthony Preston who told me that their coaching is stellar and I've made good money. So it sounds like they're paying guys on like Fiverr uh, to create fake accounts to respond to critics. Uh, well, Sanders characterizes Berju as confrontational. In person, he can be affable and relaxed and admits that Amazon changes. He's trying to understand the changes too. Watching some of his and Gazzola's early videos, it's easy to see why some might sign up for the class. Dressed in button-down shirts in a dimly lit room, speaking earnestly into a webcam, they seemed like two average guys who had cracked the code and wanted to share their knowledge. They would talk about how many people had tried to get into the course and how many weren't able to join, and listeners might feel as if they'd stumbled across one of those rare, wonderful secrets of the internet. Uh, time is more valuable than anything Bajou says in the introductory video for his solo project, telling people that if they work all the time and don't see their spouse and kids, that's not living. He talks about how much he's able to take care of his mother, pay her rent every month, and buy her a new car. It's up to you to decide if you want to be a typical or non-typical, he says. He figured out how to sell something online that people didn't need, and he's making a good living for doing it. For all the people out there who don't believe in what he does, Bajou is living proof. There are people out there willing to give away their money online. You just have to have the perfect art of the sell. So, uh, long article there. Uh, for those of you guys who, who stuck with me through it, um, interesting article. I'll link to it in the description box below if you guys want to give it a read for yourself. If you enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up. If you're not subscribed to the channel, smash that subscribe button below, and uh, we'll catch you guys in the next video. Later.